Well, friends, I am really excited because I just came back from store and got myself a little new creative tool. It is an Instax Wide printer, the Fujifilm Instax Link Wide. And it's a Wi-Fi printer that does Instax Wide film, obviously. It looks like a little router, a little internet router, but easily something that I can carry around in my backpack. Sturdy and durable. I got space gray, comes in white, if that's your preference. So let's go ahead and grab that Instax Wide Link app, and we are going to print our first photos. First off, the app is a lot different than the Instax Share app I used on my Share SP2 printer. That was for the Instax Mini. And uh, most Instax Mini printers, I believe you get in the store, are of this Link variety. They connect through Bluetooth rather than Wi-Fi. I like having connected on Bluetooth rather than Wi-Fi because I can tell you each time I try to connect my Instax SP2 to my phone, I have to mess around with it about 30 seconds to a minute trying to get it to connect over my regular apartment Wi-Fi. So one of the great things about working with these Fuji apps is that when you print a photo, it saves a copy of it to its own internal memory. And that applies to all the edits that I do to a photo. If I rotate it, if I alter the colors, apply a filter, mess around with saturation, brightness, contrast, all of these changes are going to be saved within the app in its image history. But there is no button that says image history. You have to open the app, tap the central photo, and that'll take you to all the stuff you've previously printed. My Instax Share app has a little section in the lower left that makes it really easy to figure out where all my previous prints are, makes it very easy to knock off new copies as orders come in. You can do the same thing with the LinkWide printer. Unfortunately, it's just not labeled properly. But I am able to choose a quantity of prints if I wanted to addition maybe five copies of a print right away. One of the things I thought was pretty cool about this one is that if I pick a video under three minutes, I can choose a frame and use that as a photo. Of course, you can always screenshot frames from your videos, but this is like a very direct way to get into your shorter form videos, your boomerangs and so forth, get an image, print it out. And I have found recently that a lot of my good imagery actually comes from videos where I'm photographing a model and filming them and they're in like a flow of movement and I'm able to have a wider variety of choices than I would if I was just utilizing when I press the shutter on my still camera. And then lastly within the app we have things that we can add on to our photos. These include collages, QR codes, texts, and preset templates. The collages are not what I was expecting. The collages that I was familiar with using the Polaroid Lab is where they take a photo and split it up across multiple Polaroids. It's kind of a cool feature on the Polaroid Lab, except the resolution is so low because it's still just sampling a photo that is on your screen. That's how the Polaroid Lab works, with the phone screen directly on top of this printer. The collage in the Instax Wide Link app is really just a way to put more than one photo within a single Instax Wide. And I think that's kind of uh, silly and cheesy. Did a little demo for you. You can also add text, something that my teenagers would probably utilize so they could have multiple photos with their besties. Probably not something I would use in my own art unless I was doing some kind of shoot that was directly related to comic panels. If I was using Instax Wide, as a form of business card, I think it might be useful. Uh, some of the templates lead me to believe that having wedding invitations printed out on individual Instax wide would be kind of cool. The thing that I would probably get the most use out of, of all of these kind of silly effects, is the QR codes. The QR codes could lead to your website, it could lead to some kind of pre-recorded audio or video that would show up on somebody's phone when they camera over that particular QR code. I do find QR codes very intrusive on an image. Definitely takes away from the intended design. I would probably utilize this as a form of business card if I were like at a photo fair and I was uh, meeting people who are critiquing my work and I wanted to leave them with a keepsake. Rather than have some sort of obtrusive text, I might just have the QR code down in the corner. The film I had loaded in this printer was entirely color film. I did not use any of the monochromatic in stacks wide, which is the black and white stuff. But I did convert some images to black and white and had them print out. And 
couldn't notice any particular color shift. They didn't come out slightly purple, look fine. So I'm not really sure if there is a need to purchase the monochromatic film if you intend on doing half color, half black and white. Why this is significant for me is because uh, through my Etsy shop, through the Patreon that I used to have, through Instagram, I've probably made more money selling Instax minis that I've printed than I have any other way that you can make money in photography. Uh, that includes archival print sales from you know eight by 12 to 30 by 20 size, gallery sales, so on and so forth. And there's a specific reason why I think that printing Instax minis has uh, done so well for me. Number one, I've cultivated an audience that is into instant film. Number two, it's so easy to get the materials cheaply and to ship them, you know, Instax mini fit in regular size envelope, regular size stamp or international stamp, uh, takes care of it, cuts down on my trips to the post office, to the printer, to larger uh, postal supplies. If you're shipping regular eight by 12 archival prints, it's still gotta be like in a photo mailer and you gotta drive to the post office, waste time talking to a person, blah, blah, blah. I don't print at home. I get my archival prints from a lab, which is you know, some 12 miles away from me and with gas prices going up. I mean, it's just not feasible to continue offering archival prints. You know, by contrast, uh, everything that I've been able to sell with my Instax Mini printer is something that I can replicate, that I can use uh, super cheap materials. I can order Instax Minis in bulk or buy them in bulk at like a local Walmart or Target if needed. And because it's so easy for me to reprint, ship, et cetera, uh, to my customers, I'm able to keep the price point low enough that customers that come to my store or see me on Instagram, you know, they might say I've got an extra 20 bucks, I've got an extra 50 bucks. Uh, they'll be willing to splurge and buy a whole bunch of them, works great for me. Uh, there's a collectability factor that goes along with instant film. Now, some people always get on the back about how collectible is this stuff if you're able to reprint them over and over and over. Uh, if somebody asks, I'm honest with them, you know, and a lot of times in my shop description, it says these are printed on an Instax mini Wi-Fi printer. That's how I'm able to offer images that I usually consider a little bit higher quality uh, than the random ones that I get when I use my instant film cameras, things that are like better composed, that are uh, perennial sellers, things that I can sell over and over and over again. So, you know, works in my favor, works in the customer's favor. And whenever somebody has asked me, is this an original or is this a reprint? You know, just straight up honest, I say it's a reprint and nine times out of 10, then they go ahead and buy it anyways. I've already got the Instax mini printer. I've had it for years and it's been very lucrative for me. But Fujifilm never offered an Instax wide printer, something that's way bigger than Instax mini. I know there was a market there and I've had Instax wide cameras in the past. Uh, the last one I got, I gave a really bad review to because I think it crapped out on me within a couple days and I got a new version of it and even that one had problems. Of course, I was getting those through Amazon, so who knows if they were just sending me ones that were already broken as uh, Amazon has notoriously done to a lot of people in the past. They just repackaged something and got sent back and ship it right out the door. But this link wide printer, I went ahead and just drove down to my local big box store, picked it up, brand new. Uh, First came on the market October 2021, and prior to this, there was no way to have photos on your phone, print them on something this size. There was a Polaroid Lab, which used your smartphone, but it wasn't a Wi-Fi printer. It was a uh, place your phone directly on top of that Polaroid Lab, and it'll make a square version of whatever picture you've got. So already you're altering the aspect ratio of your original photo, and then one of the things I found difficult with the Polaroid Lab is that I wanna be able to uh, reprint images over and over so they look the same. So when I sell one on Etsy, then I'm able to make a new version that is exactly the same copy as the one that I sold. And what I've noticed with the Polaroid Lab is that 
I could have the same image on my smartphone, have the same type of film inside the Polaroid lab, but when I did the reprint, there might be some chemical mix up, you know? There might be some flaw where a little bit of the photo uh, didn't get the chemistry spread across. And it just wasn't a consistent result. It wasn't feasible for me to have images that I could sell over and over and over again. The kind of audience that I've garnered and the kind of uh, position I've placed myself in as an art photographer is, you know, low cost, surreal pop art along the lines of CDs, comics, uh, DVDs, stuff that I grew up being able to afford because it was mass produced works. I'm not in the market of making things that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars that can only be purchased by somebody who's got a hedge fund, who's got an inheritance and is just looking to like invest in a young artist. That's not the market that I want to chase or be part of. Instant film that I can reproduce is great for me. Now, that being said, I'm also looking towards more of a digital nomad lifestyle, something where I can travel around and not rely on being able to make it to the printers or have a printer in my house, which I would never do anymore because uh, my experience with great photo printers is the ink costs so much that whatever you make on them is not worth the investment that you put into it. So I'm really excited to have larger prints phase out all of the archival photo prints that I have that I needed to go to a store and make and offer them as Instax wide images. Another reason why I'm down with the Instax wide is because I feel like uh, horizontal images are gonna present so much better this way than printing them sideways on the Instax Mini, which is generally like a portrait orientation. It's a portrait orientation look. You don't necessarily have to stick to that, of course. I just have a huge library of horizontal images that had a lot more detail in them. Maybe they were a model with a landscape or maybe they're just pure landscape images. I wanna see what those look like coming off of this bad boy. So there you have it, friends. This was a $150 investment for the printer than the film itself. Uh, I got my 20 packs on Amazon for $20 each, so $1 a print. And if you wanna say spend about $200 on the first day, I think that will pay for itself within about two days. Uh, all my prior Instax Mini printers paid for themselves within 24 hours of the purchase. So great way to replicate your work, sell it, uh, Give it away if you want to gift people with physical hard copies of your work, but consistent quality between every single print. That's what I was looking for and that's what I got. Best of luck in your own creative endeavors. Talk to you next time.